Hey guys, welcome. I think we're live. <laughs> this is Jessica, Furry Family Coach. Um, and today we are talking a little bit about choosing a pet sitter. Um, I think we've talked about this a little bit in the past. Uh, maybe you've done some blog posts on it and things like that. But uh, so we actually had an experience last night meeting a new sitter. Um, and I wanted to kind of talk to you about the process and what what we've done, um, what we're looking for, and how we're going about everything. Because finding somebody to take care of your pets is crucial. And it can feel like an extremely daunting task um, because... If you're anything like me, I worry constantly. And if I'm actually going to leave, like not just leave my pet with somebody for a couple of hours, but like go out of town and they're going to be completely responsible for my pet. You know, if something happens, if, if they get sick, if there's like a natural disaster, I worry about these things. Um, so we went and met somebody last night and the first thing when we when we initially moved out to California um, a number of years ago, I looked around for a company that had really good ratings, that was you know reputable, that had somebody um, that I could talk to. Like so, so I found a company out here. Um, when we were originally moved and we've been using this company ever since because they're, um, compassionate, they're fully, um, you know, insured, they have emergency, um, uh, plans in place. So I know there's, you know, a network of people through multiple different counties. If something, if some sort of natural disaster were to happen, and in fact, I think it was maybe two years ago, the owner of the company, her name is April, um, we had some fires in her home was, uh, her area was evacuated. So, you know, the whole company got together, um, you know, everybody in the network of, cause she has, um, independent consultants all around San Diego and North County and, you know, every, they have a pretty big, um, area that they cover and, you know, they got all of the dogs that were being boarded and everything. They got all of the animals, her personal animals out. Um, they have emergency plans in place. This is something and that you need to consider when you're hiring somebody to watch your pet. So I know that not only do they have emergency plans in place, um, but they have actually had to put those plans in action and they have been successful at them. So um, they're insured. I know they have the emergency plans in place. Those are two really good places to start. Um, and we actually have somebody who has been watching our pets for a number of years. I love her to death. Um, I actually consider her <laughs> more of a friend. Um, even though I do pay her to watch my, my pets, she, at this point in time where, where we are in our pet situation and our, you know, home situation, more than anything, she takes care of our, uh, my cats anytime we go out of town. So she comes into the home, into my home, you know, a number of times a day, multiple times a day. And, um, you know, gives the cats love and plays with them and pets them, any medications they need to have. That's another important thing when you're looking for a pet sitter is that they're going to be able to administer um, medication that your animal may need. So it's something to talk about if your dog or cat does need any sort of med medical attention or medication. You want to make sure that, that that's something that they're going to be able to do for you. Um, she feeds them, cleans litter boxes, you know, cleans up, all of that good stuff. Um, she's so amazing. If we're out of town, she'll even take our trash cans out and bring them back in. And um, if we have packages at the door, she brings them in and lets me know about them. And it, she, she's awesome. And I love her very much. Um, but with our dog, Kim, um, she needs a little bit more attention than that. 
um, more than just coming to check on her a few times a day, taking her for a walk a few times a day, giving her, you know, love and feeding her. She needs a little bit more. Um, I work at home, so she's used to being with me some days 24 seven. So, um, you know, I want to maintain that a level of attention with her, even when we're out of town. So uh, for the past couple of years, we've had a family member who's been able to do that for us. And she's actually moving in a couple of months. So I've already started looking for somebody else who we can actually take Kim to their home and she can stay there and she's going to feel welcome and loved and part of the family. I don't want to board her. I don't want to put her in a situation where she's stuck in a cage 20 hours a day or anything like that. Like that's, that's not what I want for my dog. Um, and I understand that some, some people and in some instances, um, that, that, that maybe the only option you have is to board your animal at a vet or a boarding facility. And, um, on, for that, that's a whole other video. If you're looking at a boarding facility um, of, of things you need to look for but I wanted to go over with you guys what we um, specifically were looking for and what we found and where we go from here so we had a just the very first meeting with somebody last night um, it was actually a husband and a wife there are no kids in the house. They actually don't have any pets at this time because they're retired and they are traveling. Like they're spending their retire retirement traveling different places. So um, it's a pretty good situation for our dog Kim because she, when she's there, she's going to get all the love and attention that these two people um, have to give. So, uh, you know, we want to make sure first off that this person actually does love animals. They're not doing it for the money, although obviously you get paid to be a pet sitter. Um, but they, they love animals and they are, we have the same, like we're on the same wavelength and we, um, I want to make sure that, that the, the level of care I give my dog is similar, if not the same to the level of care they're going to be giving my dog. Um, for example, if, um, you know, I have Kim at home with me and she has free reign of the house, um, she's fully potty trained, she doesn't pee on our carpets or anything like that, I don't have any problem giving her unrestricted access to our home. If I have somebody who's going to care for her, I don't want them to put her in her crate for, you know, eight hours a day or more. I, I don't want that to happen. So, you know, I'm looking for that same level of care from um, my home into a pet sitter's home. Um, and so that, you know, that's something that I'm looking for. And, and, and I think with this particular couple, we're on the same wavelength. Um, there were a couple of things that she said that I was, I kind of had a couple of red flags. So we wanted to meet them in person. Um, she was concerned about uh, dog hair on the furniture and if she was going to, you know, pee on her carpets or floors or anything like that. Um, you know, Kim is fully potty trained. She knows to go outside to use the restroom. Uh, and we were fortunately able to prove that last night. Um, we took her over and we showed her the backyard, which was fully fenced in. Um, and she immediately went out and peed. So that was awesome. Both in that they were relieved to find out that we weren't lying, that she is potty trained and that we now understand that she's, you know, not going to be like locked up or something when, when she's at their house, because that's not what we want. Um, we don't, we, we, we want her to be part of the family wherever she is, feel loved and welcomed, uh, because that, I mean, she's our pet. She's not, um, she's, she's, she's not, you know, a, a yard, yard ornament or anything. We don't, we don't want her to feel like she's a burden, that she's just something that they have to do. Like she's, she's going to be part of their 
family <laughs> when she's there. Um, and so we, you know, there's just a number of things that we went through. She, they, you know, they watch dogs on a regular basis and they went through all of the different dogs, types of dogs and how long they've stayed and all these different things. They obviously do love animals. It was apparent to us just through talking to them. You can find out a lot about a person just by letting them talk, which is exactly what I did last night. I said very little and gave them a lot of room to talk and they did. And it was very obvious that they do really love animals. And um, they, you know, Kim was up and down on the couch. They didn't have a problem with it, you know, have some blankets down and it's all good. So we were pretty happy with that. We were pretty happy with um, the situation we're going. So the next step is we're gonna do like a little trial run. So we're going to take her over one night when we have plans to be out of the house just for a few hours and let her go over and stay with them, see how everything goes. Um, we're gonna make sure that they don't have any problems, that, that you know, nothing, horrible happens. We're going to make sure that when we go and pick her up, we're going to watch her body language to make sure there are no signs that um, anything has gone wrong. Of course, when we go to pick her up, she's going to be super excited to see us. That's understandable. We know that. Um, but we're just going to watch her body language and make sure there are no signs that there was no foul play going on um, and just kind of go from there. So that's um, when we when we start looking at um, sitters for our pets, that's I think the number one thing we need to find is somebody who has the same understanding and same parenting style, if you will, for our pets so that we know that they're getting the same level of love and attention. If you're just joining me, I see, um, thank you so much for being here and posting JR. Um, I have gone over some of the things you should check for earlier in the video, but so when you're first selecting a pet sitter, you want to know that they're insured. You want to know that they have emergency plans in place. You want to know that, that, um, if your pet is with a sitter or if a sitter is coming to your home and something happens with that sitter, that there are backups in place. So you're never gonna be left where in a situation where you're out of town and your sitter has some medical emergency or family emergency and they can no longer take care of your pet and you're like stuck scrambling trying to figure out how to get back home in the middle of your vacation. So there, there are other people that um, can come in as a backup. You wanna make sure that they're gonna be able to um, administer any medications um, yeah, okay. So you're going to want to be able to, they're, uh, they're going to be able to administer any medications that your animal may need, that, um, they're comfortable, comfortable around your pets. They're comfortable, um, walking your dog. If, if, uh, you have a large dog, sometimes you want to make sure that, um, whoever it is, is very comfortable walking your dog, but they're not going to be using any force or pain with your dog, um, or cats for that matter. And, um, that basically you, you have the same outlook on pet parenting. Um, so here's a question. Should you use a service or individual? What are the pros and cons? So obviously if you have an individual, like a family member or a friend or a neighbor, that's awesome. And a lot of people have that in place where when they go out of town or when they just need somebody to come and check in on their pets, you know, it is a friend or a family member or a neighbor. And that's awesome. Um, the good thing about that is that it's somebody close to you. So you inherently trust them before you ask them into your home to take care of your animals. That's probably the biggest pro for having um, an individual come and take care of your animal. However, um, there are some cons to that in that um, they may have something come up in the middle of your vacation. They may have a medical emergency. They may have a family emergency. Something may be going on and they're like, I, I'm sorry, I can't take care of your animal anymore. And now you're scrambling to get back home in the middle of your vacation because you have nobody to take care of your pet. Um, so that's probably the biggest con 
in having an individual care for your animal uh, or animals. Um, when you have a service, which is what we use, we have individuals who work for a service. So I don't have like a different person coming to my house every time. I have a dedicated person who I know and trust, but they work for a company who is fully licensed and insured. So I know um, if anything happens that, that, you know, there's accountability in place and there's a support system behind the person taking care of my animals. So if something, you know, heaven forbid, does happen, um, that there's backups in place and there are other people that can come in and take care of my pet or pets. Um, I also know that if there is an, um, you know, like a natural disaster or emergency, that there are emergency plans in place um, through the company that are designed to make sure that my pet is top priority. For example, um, on more than one occasion, because we do live in California, when we have been out of town, um, there have been threats of wildfire to the neighborhood um, that we've lived in, that we live in. And we have been incredibly fortunate that our neighborhood actually hasn't been affected since we've lived here. Um, and we have not been evacuated, but there have been multiple times when we were out of town that our neighborhood has been in threat of evacuation due to wildfire. And I know that my pet sitter, uh, the one that was um, like the most imminent threat was at my home. Her, her family had her dogs taken care of. So her husband and her children had her dogs taken care of. They had their evacuation plan in place and she was physically at my home with my pets, watching the news, um, getting everything in order, waiting for um, is our neighborhood going to be evacuated or not? So she, she knew that this was serious. She wasn't waiting until the evacu evacuation order was already in place. She was already at my home waiting to make sure that if our neighborhood was evacuated, she was there, she was ready to get all of the animals packed up and take them to a safe location. So, um, for me, those are the biggest pros in using a service. I still get an individual. I still get somebody I know and trust who comes um, to my house and she is the one who, who watches my animals. But I know there are so many checks and balances in place um, that are going to help cover all of these things that I worry about every time I leave my home. <laughs> um, so. Those are, yeah, the biggest pros and cons of choosing either a service or just having an individual watch your pet or your pets. So, um, again, the next step for us is we're going to do a trial run because this is a new person for us. Um, and to be honest, like we left last night saying it seems like a nice place, you know, quiet. They're just going to relax and chill out and Kim's going to be, um, you know, taken care of and we're good. But I still am like a little up in the air. Like, are we a hundred percent sure this is the person for us? So we're going to do a trial run for just a few hours. Uh, one evening when we have something, um, that we're going to go attend and see how it goes from there. And it's something, it's a process that I highly recommend you take as well when you're choosing a new pet sitter for your dog or cat or multiple animals, <laughs> any other pets that you may have. So um, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and end this live video. If you guys have any questions or comments, go ahead and use the comment uh, box below. I'd love to hear your questions. Do you, do you use a pet sitter? Do you use a service? Do you use an individual? Do you have any other tips um, that you use when you are interviewing a new pet sitter. I'd love to hear them. And uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and end this. Oh, if you have any other questions too, it doesn't have to be about a pet sitter. Dog training, dog behavior, or we can talk about your cats. We can talk about pet nutrition. I love to talk about pet nutrition um, and what your animals are eating. 
So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Don't forget to comment below with your question um, or if you have any comments about this particular video. And I will see you guys in the next video.